the silk report. As smooth as silk. <laughs> oh, that's great. Good work, Ben and JG. Um, good to be back. Please uh, start firing any questions as and when, but try and keep them relevant to today's action. Uh, we're going to be discussing Ons Jabur. We're going to be discussing Dominic Team, uh, Carlos Alcaraz as well, and a few others. Hi there, Yurik Hakupian. I don't know if you're new to the channel, but it's great to have you on board. Uh, we'll be doing these daily over the next 15 days, of course, an extra day at Roland Garros. The Parisians like to be different. So let's get straight to it. It's great to be back. Um, obviously, I had a little hiatus from these while we went through the Masters tournaments and the ATP 250s and 500s. But now it's Grand Slam time once again, and it's Silk Report time once again. So let's get straight to it, shall we? Uh, first up, we have... Ons Jabeur, and what a what a sad sight that was to see her go out today. Unbelievable in a way, in so many ways. Uh, JG and I obviously have a little um, side bet um, on going on with Ons Jabeur and Sakri regarding their end of year ranking. Nice to see lots of comments coming in there, by the way. Gary there saying, finally a SIG report for 100 days overdue. Um, yes, yeah, so... Um, Angebur, let's let's get to it. What what happened today? Let me know your thoughts. Let's focus on on Angebur to be, to begin with, and um, I'll, I'll tell you what my thoughts are. I've just actually rewatched large parts of the match, and the way she closed out that first set to be she obviously she won it. Sorry, she but she got a double break to go six three and take that first set, and then I'm going to show you this moment at a midway point or two thirds point from the uh, third, sorry, from the second set. How on earth does Ange Jabeur lose from here? This is almost sort of Medvedev-esque, a role, um, you know, Australian Open final sort of score line. 6-3, 4-3 up, three break points, effectively three mini match points, if you like. And somehow she doesn't win from here. And then, of course, Lynette does win the tie break, although she's 3-1 down in the tie break. So Andre Burr, 3-1 up, but somehow manages to lose that tie break 7-4. So basically, Lynette wins six game points or six, six points out of seven uh, to win that tie break. Lynette then goes a break up 4-2 in the uh, third set and seemingly on course. Jabeur manages to break back, but because Lynette is serving first, she manages to break and make it 7-5 in that third set. Um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what, where you think was the turning point. I thought Lynette's gestures were quite funny throughout that match, really, and she seemed to be quite focused. It was a tricky one for to negotiate for Jabeur, but you'd expect the finalist of the last Masters 1000 tournament in Rome to be going through and to be going far in this tournament. A friend of mine, for example, had her in the final. Uh, I've actually got Sakri in the final um, of my predictions. But anyway, we'll come to that later. Uh, yes, yeah, so Andre Burr, they're disappointed for sure, but we'll be patient, strong, and believe that great things will come true. Do you think she can go far at Wimbledon? Do you think this is just a mini setback? Or do you think that Andre Burr has peaked? Let me know what you think. Time to rest a little and bounce back. See you soon. And her image there says it all. Let's have a quick look to see what you're saying in the live chat anyway. On Schubert can't beat Polish players. Well, that then brings me to a joke from our good friend JG, who says maybe we should rename this Poland Garros. After obviously Lynette's win today, Swanchek's obviously imperious form. Maybe he's also suggesting that uh, a good tournament is on the horizon for Hubi Hercatch. Um, Gary's saying, sad for Jabur, but Magda has been coming on, uh, beginning with Charleston. She's getting tough minded. Yeah, and maybe some of these gestures throughout were indicative of that. Um, okay, let's move on. Another sad story. Dominic team out in straight sets yet to win a match this year since he's come back. Um, team said in his press conference that he has zero physical issues. 
He's just not able to produce his tennis matches yet like he is in practice. Nerves are toxic to his forehand, is what he said. And he's going to go back to challenges for a bit. Do you think that's the right decision? Uh, he admitted he hasn't been close to winning the matches he's lost. It's not like he's going out in five sets today. Um, knows that this process is going to take time. Guys in the live chat, let me know if you think he'll ever get back. Am I being a bit too dramatic? But the thing is, um, for me, it's been almost two years. I would say it's the dub, it's the ATP finals of 2020. So it's sort of 19, 20 months since we've seen a dominant team fit, firing on, on all cylinders, on all cylinders, and full of confidence. Um, I think it's it's yeah, it's kind of sad. And I and I mentioned that on Twitter today. Obviously losing six three, six two, six four. Um, you know, a decent opponent, but one you'd expect team to overcome. Uh let's have a quick look. Um what people are saying. Anything comments on team, please get your team comments in. Uh maybe we'll come back to that. They say consistency is key and team is just about the only player on tour with a hundred percent record. Unfortunately, it's a hundred percent losses. Cal Kathy there saying challenges maybe not a bad, bad idea. Completely agree. Think he needs to build his confidence up, and let's hope he does that very soon. Moving on. Uh, let's have a quick look what's going on next. Well, a more positive story for a player that's becoming established. Carlos Alcaraz winning easily, yes. It was in the end, but 6-4 in the first set actually does tell you a slightly different story. The first set was nip and tuck, and it was going on serve until... Alcaraz managed to break there in game nine, but from that moment onwards, there was no looking back, onwards and upwards. How far can you can Alcaraz go in this tournament? I have him down in the semifinals, but perhaps you have him going all the way, and perhaps even further. Um, I thought he did look impressive in the end, and to be honest with you, his opponent, yeah, tricky one. Um, uh, so, yeah, he, he did great today, and... See how we're getting on. A nice super chat there. Thank you very much from Tatty Champ. Uh, just a quick comment again on team from Gary with Dominic. It may be what I feared about Nole some weeks ago. Some players age physically or mentally overnight. Yeah, but I don't think you've got anything to worry about with uh, Djokovic, Gary. Uh, but yeah, the thing is with team is I think once it goes beyond a year, whether it be an injury, whether it be a form situation, I mean, we're now deep into the second year. Um, how long can this go on? Um, yeah. Anyway, back to challenges and hopefully back to full fitness and full confidence. Uh, let's uh, move on anyway from Alcaraz, who's obviously in fine fettle and will obviously go far. Let me know how far you think he will go. Um, Muguruza is another big crasher, if you like, and big casualty from day one of 15. She lost to Kai Kanepi today. Um, it was a really tough first round opponent, but Muguruza is just in free fall. Um, and here's some nice stats about Kai Kanepi versus top 10 players at Grand Slam since Wimbledon 2010. She's actually nine and seven. Uh, somebody like uh, Zverev, who also went through today, would love to have a record like that at Grand Slams. Kai Kanepi versus top 10 players outside of Grand Slams over the same period has actually only won four from 22. So she's certainly someone who rises herself to the big occasion including beating Stosa, Jankovic on two occasions, Wozniacki, Kerber, Halep, Kenin, Sabalenka, and today, Muguruza. What is going on with Muguruza? Are we going to be talking about her in the same sort of Vilgas team in the next few months? Is she ever going to be getting get back? Muguruza is such an aggressive player, though, and such a confidence player that that's why she seems to go in these sort of, you know, flows of unbelievable form and then unbelievable dips. Right now, uh, is she at the bottom of the trough or is it going to continue? She's obviously a former French Open and Wimbledon champion. And we're now in the midst of those two grand slams. Um, but it's just kind of sad to see the the demise of these players on day one. Um, it's obviously going to be a while now before we see them on court again, before the grass court season gets underway. Well, we mentioned Anjabur going out earlier. But my friend, Zachary, who I've got tipped to go to the final, went through in straight sets today, despite the pressure of having a hero of hers watching, Thierry Henry. 
the French footballer or the former uh, French international. And she described Henri as like a legend of the game. I do follow football. He had an amazing career. Thankfully, I didn't see him because I would have got stressed. Well, no worries. She didn't see him and her opponent barely saw her as well as she saw her off in straight sets. Um, okay, let's have a quick uh, look at some other results. Munar winning their four sets. I did watch that match. O'Connell, who the boys saw in Zagreb, will be disappointed over going out in straight sets there as well. Uh, we already touched on team's result to Delhi, and what a pity that was. Uh, Dimitrov going through. Schwartzman, what do you think about Schwartzman? I mean, talking of sort of two-year dips, since really that French Open semi-final run, I mean, I know Schwartzman went through today, but dropping a set, I don't think things look good for Schwartzman. Let me know what you think. Uh, van der Schlanslup, let me know what you think about my pronunciation there. He managed to get through against Ben's qualifier, Dark Horse, if you like, or his qualifier prediction of Kotov. Talking of qualifier predictions, JG's qualifier prediction actually did do very well today against Felix, pushing him to five sets. That's another match I pretty much focused on. Um, but what do you think about Felix? Is something going on with him? Is it just his clay court form? This is actually his first time in round two so <laughs> in his entire career. So perhaps maybe this, this isn't too bad for him. Uh, let's have a quick look at the live chat to see what you guys are saying on some of these things. Gary says, no excuses. Uh, with Muguruza. Uh, she's letting her career get away from her. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, and 12 Travel 21, I picked Muguruza to lose in round one. So did I. Um, but I, he also picked Fakina to go far. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I actually have Muguruza to go out as well. It's a super tough first round. And her form since pretty much the W2A finals in November in Guadalajara has been. Um, yeah, has been pretty much that. I think Schwartzman's got a quite a kind draw. Uh, I will say that. So that's why I think I have him going as far as um, uh, I think the fourth round uh, where he, I think, will meet Djokovic. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. But that's just more because he's got a kind draw. There's nothing about his form and perhaps Felix as well that suggests they're going to go far. I think Felix is due to meet Rafa at some point, I think in the fourth round as well. Uh, but he might not even make it that far. I really, uh, I'm not sure. Nevertheless, Ashley says it's nice to see Felix fight and get that win. Uh, yes, that was nice for him and his followers. Yeah, Fokino, I think, and Brooksby are two notable um, uh, demises today as well. Excellent win for Cuevas. And as uh, Ben said in a private chat with early today, rolling back the years. I love a bit of Cuevas. And um, yeah, nice. And, of course, uh, Greek Spore there beating Fakina. That was a tough first round for Fakina, but, I mean, this is a guy who was in the final of Monte Carlo beating Djokovic en route, was showing excellent clay court form and will be exceptionally disappointed to lose today. Fognini and Popperin actually was a great first round match, but it didn't really materialise as Fognini won it comfortably. But it was a really close one. I did go for Fognini to win, but it was kind of a 60-40. Um, so that's it. Our poor Karatsev going out in a fifth set tiebreaker. Again, Karatsev, is he reverting to the norm, perhaps, after his Australian Open heroics and some other tournament heroics, including in Serbia, getting to the final last year? Is he now reverting back to form? Because probably since that Serbia final, we haven't really seen him pull up any trees. Zverev through comfortably. No shocks there. And we've already spoken about Alcaraz. Chastea, I had a pick. Uh, I've got her going quite far in this tournament, partly because of kind draw. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got her going quite far. So let's see if she uh, materialises with that. I've already touched on Jabur. Uh, Sloan Stevens there winning in three sets. That's a nice one. Already spoke about Muguruza. Um, anybody I think I'm missing, really. Coco Goff, JG telling me that Coco Goff, not only did she win comfortably today, six love there in the second set, but she's also got a good draw, and so maybe she will go far. Fernandez winning in straight sets two and winning the first set, six love. So, lot to talk about. Day one, the matches are coming thick and fast. I will just touch on the live chat before we talk about what's coming up tomorrow. Yes, definitely like the video. I want to get 100 likes, please, for this Quality shot there, saying he had a feeling Brooksby would struggle. Yeah, well, I think you called that pretty well there, quality shot. I I actually had Brooksby to go through. He's one of the few that I did get wrong. I think in the men's draw, I got 15 out of 20 correct today. The women's, I got 17 out of 20. Big it on. 
Uh, but yeah, like the video and please subscribe if you are new. Thoughts on Fognini? Not been in the best form of this year, but Rafa won't want uh, to play him in round three. Will be lots of rise and running, not good for the foot. Yeah, because Fognini is a solid uh, player. I think you're right in that respect. But I still think Rafa will be in uh, should they meet in round three. But Rafa's draw is tough. I mean, I expect him to win tomorrow, um, one of the matches that we'll see. Uh, and let's actually come to that right now. I think Rafa's draw is tough. Um, and it uh, should be good for tomorrow with Thompson. But after that, potentially Vavrinka. After that, potentially uh, Fognini. Uh, I can certainly see him dropping a set against, although he did win in straight sets at the Australian Open last year in probably one of Nadal's best performances of last year. But they were few and far between. Um, but yeah, we've got Nadal against Thompson, which will be on about mid-afternoon, depending on how things shape up. Uh, we've also got Djokovic on the channel tomorrow night against Nishioka. Let me know if you think Djokovic will win that easily or whether Nishioka can pose him a few troubles. We've got a lots of, to show you on the uh, channel tomorrow with Raducanu against Nuskofa. I've got Raducanu to win that. You'll be not surprised to hear as well that I have Swanchek beating Surenko. What about Osaka Anisimova? Probably the hardest match of all to predict from the first round. Am I too down on Osaka? Am I too big on Anisimova? Um, let me know if you think that this is going to be a comfortable win for either player. I have this one as the most difficult one to predict. Uh, and I actually can't remember what I had uh, for going through. I think I've gone for Anisimova, but perhaps I'm being a bit too down on Osaka. Yeah, I'll come back to Fognini anyway. I do think that's a good point about the foot um, for Rafa. Is I know he's got his doctor with him, and some people have been suggesting that he will be taking painkilling injections. Maybe that's the case, and he just wants to get this tournament done and then maybe skip Wimbledon. I wouldn't be surprised if that ends up happening, depending on how this tournament pans out. Um, Prabesh going beats her comfortably, 6-2, 6-2. I think it'll be a bit closer than that, but you might be right. Uh, let me know about your predictions for those matches. Um, I've got Schwartzman. Yeah, have I got him beating Grigor? I'm not sure. Honestly, I can't remember Prabesh. Um, let me know your predictions for tomorrow. Let me know some of your thoughts on today um, before we uh, close this first day out. We had sort of about, uh, do you think Rafa was hoping for a Felix loss today? Maybe, maybe, but I don't see... Uh, honestly, I don't see Felix beating Rafa. If Rafa's fit, I don't see anybody being him for the quarterfinals, despite the fact that he has got a tough run. The problem with Rafa is, and the foot is, they are all going to start building up. You're going to get Favrinka potentially in round two, although there's no guarantees that he'll beat. I think it's Moutet. Um, but in round three, potentially Fognini pushing him from side to side. Felix is a bit more of an aggressive player, so perhaps... That would be slightly shorter points, but still a hugely tough opponent, one that I expect him to prevail against. And then it's Djokovic. And then if he does manage to keep going, it's um, uh, Alcaraz. And then obviously whoever he meets in the final will be a tough one. Um, give me some more thoughts on tomorrow before we close out. Um, uh, nice of these comments as well. Make sure you hit that like thing. This foot thing is overrated. So Nadal has always had foot uh, injuries, comes and goes. Maybe, but... What I'm concerned with is once the foot does flare up, like it did in August of last year in the US, um, I'm with I'm with Gary on this. It's a wild card. It's a wild card, the foot. But I don't want to dwell on that too much. Let's see how he gets on tomorrow. Let me know what you think about Swanchek. Is she going to breeze through tomorrow? Is she going to breeze all the way to the final? Um, I'll just give a few more thoughts on today as well um, before I come to your comments and questions perhaps that you might have. Um, I think it was a fairly, with the exception of probably Jabeur's defeat, I think it was a fairly flat opening day. I know we dwelt a bit on team and Felix and Alcaraz too, but there weren't, I think everybody pretty much had team going through, sorry, had team going out. And I think it would have been a surprise uh, if that hadn't have been the case, to be honest with you. But Jabeur was the big one, shocked. I mean, 40 love up um, on with the break, uh, just shocked to see how that um, panned out. Let me know, am I uh, am I stupid for being shocked? Uh, I'm more than happy to see those comments uh, if you think that's the case in the uh, in the chat. Uh, is Musetti Sitsipas tomorrow? Yes, I think that's actually another day after. I think it's Tuesday. Um, 
I've actually got tickets for Roland Garros of Wednesday, Friday, Sunday of next week. And I'm expecting to see Tsitsipas as he's in the bottom half of the draw. Um, I'm expecting to see probably quite, quite possibly Tsitsipas will play on the Wednesday. Um, and then I've got obviously the men's semis and the final. So um, Swanchek Halep will be tournament's pivotal moment. I disagree, Gary. I don't think Halep uh, is going to be pulling up any trees at this tournament. I've already spoken about the Molotoglu factor. I really do think it's overrated. I do think that Swanchek is too good for everyone, as David says, um, especially when she's on form, which, of course, is right now. Uh, honestly, Halep has done nothing since Molotoglu took over to suggest she's going to be doing anything. And, yeah, uh, I think Rune versus Shap Shapovalov is obviously a big one for tomorrow, and it's a really tight call. I have Shapovalov prevailing, but, you know, you could make a call for either player. Holger Rune, of course, is another body, another person who's in the... Uh, more Toglu stable, but I don't really see this being a, a, a thing. And uh, hey, listen, if, if Halep gets to the final, hi, May, by the way, um, uh, nice to have you on board. Uh, what's you know, if, if Halep gets to the final, she's had a great tournament, and perhaps we can start talking about more Toglu as this coaching genius, <coughs> excuse me. But the way I see it is, um, yeah, uh, I see her going out much earlier. Uh, JG, what injury is Raducanu going to have tomorrow? JG, you and Raducanu is like, um, it's like uh, Piers Morgan and uh, Meghan Merkel. Honestly, there's something going on there. Relax, let it go. Um, do you think Simona is suffering since Darren Cahill? Yeah, I, 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 I think perhaps she is. And I think perhaps she jettisoned him too early, although I believe their relationship is good. Uh, I know that she wasn't at her wedding last year, or he wasn't at her wedding last year, uh, and then suddenly they had a break. Then Kay Heal's doing a bit of work for TV. He's on the market. I don't know why Raducanu didn't consider him, to be honest with you. Um, oh, great. You're heading to Paris with your mum tomorrow. Uh, how long are you going to be there for, May? Will you be there next week as well at the men's quarters or semis or final? If so, perhaps we'll cross paths. Um, Simona was the queen of clay before Swanchik announced herself. Yeah, she was the queen of clay before... Uh, uh, before Swanchek came along, and she certainly won't be regaining that crown anytime soon. Uh, JG, the biggest Y guy in, in the chat. You're going to be staying for two weeks. Well, perhaps we can cross paths May next Wednesday, Friday, or Sunday. Anyway, um, Mohotoglu, the most overrated person in tennis. Sorry, had to be said, Prabesh. Yeah, nice. Uh, I think you can probably guess where I stand on Mohotoglu as well. Um, with that, Hopefully you stand in a good place on the Silk Report. Make sure you click the like button. Thanks for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Ciao. The Silk Report.